right, thanks, EK. Welcome to the Pick 6 Podcast Show here on CBS Sports HQ. I'm Will Brinson, joined by Bryant McFadden, Ryan Wilson, and Sean Wagner McGuff. Hope everyone is having a lovely uh, Wednesday. Sure, Wednesday works. I guess it's Wednesday. I've lost track of days uh, lately. That's just sort of the nature of the business when you're locked inside your house. But we're here to do a ton of content for you as it relates to the NFL. Fortunately, we have content happening like uh, Tom Brady doing a 14 hour interview with Howard Stern on Wednesday morning, a remarkable, uh, it, it was actually two and a half hours long. And I, I was really impressed with it's, it's Howard Stern. He's the goat, right? Tom Brady's the goat of quarterbacking. Howard Stern is the goat of interviewing. And I thought it was amazing is Howard Stern really did a perfect job of like setting it up and working, like working Brady and softening him up and softening him up. And as soon as he felt like saw the crease, like to make a cut to go for to go for the you know to to make a cut through the offensive line, you could tell to use a football term that like he he knew when to attack and he really put the full court press on Brady and it really opened Brady up. I mean that's why he's the best at what he does. And they went through these wide ranging topics and I'm just curious, B Mac, what you know your thought? Brady said that he he admitted that going into the 2019 season, he believed it was his last season with the Patriots. Do you think that changed how he played? Do you think it changed? Do you think it weighed on him heavily during the season? Do you think it maybe changed the outcome of what happened in 2019 because he was so worried about the finality of it all? No, nah, well, I don't think so. And the reason why I say that is because knowing Tom Brady, watching him throughout his professional career, one thing that he believes and he loves is winning, is competing, competing for championships. And remember, guys, earlier in 2019, many people felt like the Patriots had an opportunity to go 13-0, 14-0. Remember when they had Antonio Brown, look, looking at how well their offense started off. They had Josh Gordon. The defense were doing, were, 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 were doing great things, forcing turnovers, scoring points. And then Antonio Brown got released. And then Josh, the Josh Gordon situation happened. So for me, I think Tom Brady marched into 2019 Yes, knowing that that could potentially be his last year. And if that was the case, he wanted to go out on a high note. And I think he put forth his best effort. But because of what was surrounding him, we didn't see the Brady-like numbers and, of course, the Brady-like wins. First of all, uh, speaking of goats, Home Alone is the goat Christmas movie. I'm with you, B-Mac. That is my go-to jam. I watch it probably 31 times in December. You can't lose with little Kevin there. Uh, by the way, uh, Brinson, I'm sort of surprised you didn't wish, wish Breach's daughter uh, a second happy birthday today. She's two years old. Um, so uh, she's two days old. Congratulations again, Breach. We'll say that until you come back. As for Tom Brady, one of my biggest takeaways from his comments with Howard Stern is that he actually told Bill Belichick, I don't have any trust in the receivers that can help us win a football game. And he just put it out there on the table. He said Belichick understood, and it was clear throughout the course of that season that only Julian Edelman was was about the only guy. He, he trusted Antonio Brown for 11 days, and Antonio Brown was subsequently released. But after that, it was tough sledding for that offense, primarily because Tom Brady had no one to throw the ball to. He knew that. Belichick knew that, and we knew it watching it. My other takeaway was this is going to fit perfectly with what happens when he goes to Tampa Bay because – if he ain't throwing the ball just to anybody, that means he's not throwing 30 interceptions. And uh, you take away, I don't know, half of those picks last year, those are probably worth two wins for the Buccaneers and going to the playoffs. So uh, that's another reason to think that Tampa Bay uh, is very much in the playoff conversation next year, even if winning the division might be a little tough. Yeah, and I think both of those comments that you guys mentioned are, are directly related. Brady not having good receivers. Um, and he went into the season – knowing that he was not going to have a talented receiving court. I know they had Josh Gordon, they later sent Antonio Brown, but look, there's a reason those two guys were available and on the Patriots at that time. No one else really wanted them. And so my biggest takeaway about that comment that he knew going into the 2019 season that it was his final year there. Do you remember a couple years ago when ESPN dropped that big Seth Wickersham article about how there was a lot of tension between Belichick and Brady? And at the time, because the Patriots were always so good and they were going to Super Bowl still, every every New England Patriot fan was calling it fake news and you know the media trying to start a conspiracy against the Patriots. But if Brady knew going into the 2019 season that it was his last thing in New that last year in New England. I think that adds even more credibility to that article, that there was tension brewing probably, I would guess, until um, ever since they drafted Jimmy Garoppolo and knowing that his successor might have been in the building and knowing that Belichick might have wanted to move forward with Garoppolo. So I think 
this is just another piece of evidence that while we saw that quote there from Brady that they both have that he has respect for Belichick clearly and he thinks both of them played a huge role in that dynasty that there was tension brewing for a number of years and that that's why Brady decided before the 2019 season that he was on his way out. Hey, look, man, you get uh, jammed into one building with somebody for 20 years. And it's hard enough to do 20 <laughs> days with somebody you're in love with, right? Uh, try 20 years with Brady and Belichick together. I thought the the best answer that he gave the entire, well, not <laughs> football-related answer that he gave during the entire interview. Uh, there are some other entertaining answers that we might not get to on this particular football show. But to me, it was fascinating. Howard Stern had him press, and he had Brady like opening up, and you could tell Brady was being honest and he was speaking freely. Borderline over-swearing. I thought he was cussing a little too much, to be honest. It's like uh, like if you threw Sean on a uh, on like a like an uh, like a, an explicit podcast, Sean would be just dropping. He would be dropping a bombs. He would be dropping but like it was, f bombs. It was how it would be littered right? with it. Yeah, yeah, no, it was fine. I'm just saying he was over cussing a little bit. Like he felt it's like he's a little too free, in my opinion. Yeah, you like can't letting people know Tom Brady knows how it's sir. Sir. Okay. All right. Fair enough, b Mac. Fair enough. Uh, so anyway, he's asking one of these cuss words that we'll show you right now. Of course, we have to bleep it out because we're a family program. He was asked about whether or not it's Bill Bel Belichick got too much credit. And he said, I think it's a pretty bleepy argument. Bleepy. Actually, that people would say that because, again, I can't do his job and he can't do mine. So the fact you could say, would I be successful without him, the same level of success? I don't believe I would have been, but I feel the same vice versa as well. BMAC, do you think this is a is it is it is it it's a great point, right? Like you need both to win, don't you? You do need both to win. And I and I'm so happy that Tom actually had an opportunity to address this because uh, the, the debate will be who needed more than the other, right? Which person needed the other person more? Granted, Belichick, the greatest coach, I think, of all time. Tom Brady, the greatest quarterback, arguably the greatest NFL player of all time because of their championships and the wins. But now we get a chance to see something similar to what we saw with the late, great Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal. When Shaquille left, the Lakers went down to Miami. He won a championship first. And I remember Kobe said when he saw Shaq win that championship, he went out instantly and started to do win sprints because he wanted to show the world he could win without Shaq. And the championships they had together wasn't solely because of Shaq. He felt like he could. He needed to show he can carry his own weight, and I think that will be a reoccurring storyline, guys, for Belichick in 2020 and Tom Brady in 2020. It's not solely just about the Buccaneers versus the Pats. It's this is about head coach, greatest of all time, NFL player, greatest of all time, Tom Brady. Who can be successful without the other? So I think when he answered that question, I agree with him. I think they, they mesh well. Both individuals needed each other to be successful and to have the championships they had. But now, which player, which individual can go on and still be successful without the other? We're going to talk about this throughout the entire season, guys, especially seeing, monitoring each team and each individual. Yeah, BMAC's right. Now we're going to find out exactly how important these two guys were when they were a couple, and now that they're broken up, how do their new extended families work out in Tampa Bay and is in New England where Bill Belichick will remain. I I feel like more pressure's on Tom Brady to have success. We've talked about this before in the Pick 6 podcast than it is for Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick, Bill Belichick can go out there and win five football games with Jared Stidham, and no one's going to say, uh, he's a horrible coach. But if Tom Brady goes 5-11 and in Tampa Bay, people will be like, eh, Maybe Bill Belichick was more important than you thought, and you, you needed that strict father and not just some guy that lets you run around all hours of the night without a care in the world. That said, I think Tom Brady is more important for the success New England had during his career than Bill Belichick. They're, it's like 49-51. Oh. They're, they're almost equal, but I feel like at the end of the day, Tom Brady was what put them over the top, although Bill Belichick obviously is a Hall of Fame coach. So I actually think it's Tom Brady who, A, is best set up to thrive post-Patriots dynasty just because if we look at, you know, who's built the win right now, I think we would all agree from top to bottom the Bucks are probably a better team than the New England Patriots. But I also think it's Brady who has more to prove, and Ryan was kind of alluding to that at the beginning of his answer, uh, because Bill Belichick, unlike Tom Brady, did have success in the NFL before he got paired with Tom Brady. You know, we look at one of the best all-time defensive coordinators and 
He he has game plans in the Hall of Fame from when he was a defensive coordinator with the Giants. And look, he even took the Cleveland Browns to the playoffs, something that we know is pretty much impossible to do. So I think Belichick at least has that. You look at the Matt Castle season as well. Um, you look at the Deflate Gate suspension, how they handled that, and they went they rolled right along with Jacoby Brissett and, and uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. So I think it's Brady who has more to prove, but I also think that's a good thing for Brady because he's going to prove himself very well in Tampa Bay because he landed on the best possible football team he could have left if he did leave. And the last thing I want to say, circling back to him knowing the 2019 season was his last year in New England, I really wonder how much things would have changed if Gronk had it retired because I also think he was looking at that supporting cast and he was like, no Gronk, like all I have is Edelman. We need to get a whole lot better. I don't know how we're going to do that. I wonder if Gronk hadn't retired early if Brady would have been willing to stay and put up with Belichick because he would have been paired with the best tight end in NFL history. I think it is kind of remarkable how congenial this divorce has been. I mean, you're talking about the greatest coach of all time and the greatest quarterback of all time. And they separated after 20 years and it could have been so ugly. As you mentioned, you know, the stuff with the Seth Wickersham article and the, the tension surrounding the Patriots several years ago, the Jimmy Garoppolo stuff, like the fact that there wasn't this massive, just public divorce is kind of surprising. Tom Brady also said during this interview, one of the other things that he mentioned in terms of the bigger picture and all of that, he said, I never cared about legacy. I could give a bleep about that. And again, with the swearing, I never once when I was in high school said, man, I can't wait for what my football legacy looks like. That's not just me. That's, that's just not me. That's just not my personality. Buy or sell BMAC. Tom Brady doesn't care about his legacy. Ah, uh, I'm selling that, Will. Tom Brady, mm -hmm. I think he cares about his legacy. And the reason why I say that is when you care about championships, when you care about considering one of the greatest to ever do it, that is tied to your legacy, right? That 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 is associated yeah. with what you've done. So for me, if he wasn't so in love with winning, if he wasn't so in love with being considered the elite, being considered the greatest, or in that conversation, then y you would say he would not be in love with his legacy. Because one thing you talk about when it comes to professional sports guys, especially in the NFL, when your career is not as long as some of the other athletes in different professional sports, when you walk away from the game, then your legacy is being talked about in barbershops. Arguably for Tom Brady, we've been talking about his legacy for the last five, six years because we've been thinking eventually he would walk off and leave the game, but he hasn't. So I disagree with that statement from him, just from me seeing how he goes about his business because everything he's done is tied to his legacy. You know, coming into the league, the championships, it's all tied to his legacy, and he would like to continue to add to that legacy. In my opinion, that's why he has not walked away from the game. He wants to create a legacy that's going to be hard to repeat or, or overdo. And I think he's in, in, in that direction, looking at some of these outstanding accolades. It's going to be tough for any quarterback to come behind Tom Brady to repeat or do even better than what Tom Brady has done. And you know what that will say? Tom Brady will have arguably one of the best legacies ever in the NFL. Yeah, I'm selling with BMAC. Uh, look, uh, and BMAC's talked about this before. Mike, Mike Tomlin said to the Steelers back in the day, it's a five-star matchup because we're in it. He ain't saying that to a bunch of uh, guys in the locker room that don't care about what they're doing for a living. These aren't a bunch of guys working at the carpet store. These are people trying to prove to themselves, to their family and friends, to the people in the stands that they are the best at what they do. And if Tom Brady had said, yes, I very much care about my legacy, no one would have said, oh, my God, I can't believe Tom Brady said that. They would have said, yeah. That makes sense. Look at you. You were a six-round pick, taking 199th overall. You literally cried on television recounting all the quarterbacks that went in front of you. Someone who doesn't care about their legacy wouldn't be on television crying about where they were in their on the organization chart. So um, I understand him being modest uh, in this interview with Howard Stern. But at the end of the day, uh, he's a goat. He's the goat for a reason, and uh, his legacy would appear to be very much important to him. Yeah, and here's the thing. He doesn't need to worry about it because I have a hard time believing anyone is ever going to surpass the six Super Bowls that he's won. And, and, hey, he has a chance to go win another one or two in Tampa Bay. And, like, sure, we t I know I talk about Patrick Mahomes a lot and how he's the best quarterback I've ever seen play just in terms of talent. It's still hard to imagine 
the Chiefs and Mahomes winning six Super Bowls. You think about how hard it was for them just to win this one and all the comebacks and all the things that had to go right. It's hard to win Super Bowls. You can be the best team and you don't win. Um, we see that year in, year out. The best team doesn't always win the Super Bowl. So Brady doesn't have to worry about his legacy because it's already completely secure. And so I'm, but I do sell it. It's one of those things where I think players don't have to think about their legacy until they retire. I think he's going to care a whole lot when he retires um, about how many Super Bowls he has, how many MVPs he has, where he ranks, you know, with Drew Brees, they're going back and forth. He doesn't have to worry about that right now, but as soon as he retires, he's going to care a whole lot, I would think. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm selling the heck out of this. I'll sell it, sell it, sell it, sell it, sell it. He created a Facebook documentary. He hired a, a famous director and did a Facebook documentary called Tom versus Time, in which he debates, like, should I return? Will I be back? Is this the end of Brady as we do? Like, come on, like, if you, if you don't care about your legacy, you're not doing a dramatic film about your legacy, like, designed to pump pump up you know the drama surrounding what your future is so i'm selling this all the way i think he cares deeply about his legacy but he can't say that he cares because then the chip is taken off his shoulder and he still rolls with that chip on his shoulder by the way as um 20 year anniversary of tom Brady being drafted i wonder if anyone will mention that on the 199th pick of the 2020 nfl draft at any point on any telecast out there one more thing on this one because i just i found it was curious tom brady said Two years ago, I had to make a big transition in my life. I had to take care of my family because our situation wasn't great. Essentially, he said, BMAC, he stopped going to OTAs because he was worried about his marriage. How difficult is that balance for somebody like Tom Brady who's been doing this for so long? I can imagine, Will, it's very, very difficult because, you know, Tom Brady, like you said, has been playing the, in the National Football League for such a long time, and he's been married the, throughout the majority of those years, especially the last, you know, six, seven years or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. So being able to continue to go about your business, and the thing is about Tom Brady, the difference between Tom Brady is that the position he plays, it com it calls for him to be more involved. It calls for him to be more at the facility. He has to be one of the early ones to get there, one of the late ones to leave. And for us, as a defender, you know, we go in and do our business and study, we can go home. When Tom Brady goes home, guess what? He has to study. He has to do more than what other positions has to do because his job is very, very important. And he knows the success of the team relies a lot on what he does. So if he's devoting that amount of time at the facility, and then when he gets home, he's devoting that amount of time, the extra time to the playbook, uh, going through watching his cut-ups and things like that. Guess who's getting the short end of the stick? His family, his wife, his kids. And that's a, that has been a reoccurring thing, right? And Tom Brady's a guy who's in love with winning. He's not going to short shortchange the game because he knows any get at any given time if he shortchanges the game they can show up on a sunday or a monday so he ends up in my opinion kind of shortchanging the family so i can see where he's coming from because i've seen quarterbacks especially the great one guys they put in so much of quality time throughout the season from july until january Nothing else matters to quarterbacks. It's only football. So their significant other has to be a strong individual, mentally and physically, because when they're away, they have to take care of everything. And trust me, I'm seeing how difficult it is to handle children because I've been home just like <laughs> you guys, and man, I'm ready for school to start ASAP. <laughs> so, uh, uh, all right, hey, Ryan, we're going to... Not to not not to cut into your time right here, but you know, it's uh, it's it's Tom versus it's it's, it's Sean versus Time. So we're gonna go to break. Uh, Tom Brady is I don't know Sean versus Time. Something. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.